So if you want to rank up faster in Modern Warfare 3 ranked play, you're going to have to do a few things. But the very first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest and greatest loadouts, the best strategies, and some of the best gameplays in ranked play. All right, let's hop into this, guys. All right, first off, you're going to have to win more games. And what's that really mean? You guys are going to have to set a realistic standard of what winning games really means and what a win-loss percentage that you can actually achieve in ranked play is. Lots of players come into ranked play thinking that, oh, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to play objective. I'm going to win the game. That's just not necessarily as easy as it really is. A lot of the times when you come in and you are a, if you were a gold player in Modern Warfare 2, and you come into this game saying that you're going to hit Crimson in this first season, that's an unrealistic goal. You're going to have to figure out what you can reasonably do. If you were a gold one in Modern Warfare 2 and that was your best rank that you achieved, how about we try to hit platinum this time? You know, once you hit plat, okay, we can reset our goal, but just try to hit the next rank up. Right now, my highest rank was Crimson last year. I almost got the iridescent once, but it just, I'm on PC and there's a lot of hackers and it got really frustrating and i didn't feel like playing anymore i might buy a ps3 uh, ps3 i might buy a ps5 this year if i really want to go for higher ranks because it just there's less cheaters and it's everyone's more on a level playing field so that's how you set a realistic expectation also the good things you can do to rank up especially early on in the game these are the key tips is don't lose you really don't want to lose guys you want to be playing the objective slaying out you know getting a lot of kills and playing with your teammates very well and the best thing you can do is to play off your teammates if you don't if you go even a game and you still win the game that's pretty good as long as you don't lose the games you're fine but once you start losing games what happens is if you lose let's say three out of ten games the game goes okay he's not winning them all anymore we're gonna start giving you less sr because you shouldn't be getting this sr at this rate because now we're gonna place you too high in the rankings so basically there's like these hidden metrics basically behind the scenes I'll make a whole nother video on how sr works and why you don't get as much sr as you think you might be getting but just play the objective get a lot of kills and try to win every single game do whatever you can to help out the team and if you find random teammates and your role is just rotate early you cure hills and hold lines of sight just do that even if you're in like gold or bronze and you're supposed to be like a platinum or a diamond player don't don't get an ego because somebody else is just trying to hold the hill or trying to hold a certain line of sight that is like you know, a popular line of sight just play play your angles do what's best for the team watch the flank if no one's watching it hold the angle no one's holding these small things that you can do are really going to make your team win versus let's say if you're trying to have an ego and you're going to oh i'm going to hold this window or i'm going to you know, i'm going to try to go out and slay on these people you could go out there die or not hold that angle and if you go die then there's extra lane and one last person is a 4v3 now on point and if you're not holding the, the angle that's open right now they're gonna come there they're gonna get two piece on you and your teammate and next thing you know the hill's broken and you guys lost 30 seconds 30 seconds you should have had if you just held the angle because it would have been an easy kill these are the basic things that you need to be doing just to you know get through these early ranks the early ranks are not the time to be messing around or really going full rogue or anything if you just play a smart game and play your game obviously there are some games you're gonna be in and you're gonna be like okay these guys are literally a bronze or a silver player and you can just gun them over and over and it's not gonna mean anything so yeah i'm not talking about those games i'm talking about those games that end 170 to 250 and, and hard point and you're just like mm, you know if we just didn't catch a few gunfights here this could have went a whole different way those games are talking about the close ones ones that you really want to lock up and make sure you actually win play with and play off your teammates the biggest thing people don't do is they don't play off their teammates. They sit there and they call their teammates trash, say their teammates aren't doing this or doing that, but your teammate might not even know how to play hardpoint or you know control or anything. So if you have a guy on hardpoint and, and he's never played hardpoint really before in ranked play even, just tell him, hey, stay down on the hill, I got you. And you know what? He might peak, he might not. But you saying, hey, stay down on the hill, that will make him feel better. That might make him not peak because he'll be like, oh, hey, he's got me. Best example I have in my head is like P3 on terminal. That guy might now just turn around watch behind he might he's not gonna watch the front or he might just snake uh, the counter instead you know he's not gonna sit there and stand up and hold the the head glitch that's not really a head glitch you know he's not gonna be exposed to the enemy and I don't think you, you can wall bang that front counter area so that's just something that you know, an easy way you could just save yourself you know 30 or 40 seconds just by not having your teammate you know throw the game and you can do this a lot of times like hey wait for me wait for me wait for me you hit front just wait front and I'll, I'll, I'll hit the back of playing real quick small things like that are gonna allow you guys to have a higher success rate don't solo queue either solo queuing i know it's hard guys it's really hard to not solo queue sometimes you don't always have buddies online but when you're playing in the game and you have run across people with mics and you, you know you're vibing you have a good time and you guys win the game 
be like, hey, you guys want to party up or send them a farm request. You know, see, maybe they'll add you. And next time you're on, they'll be on too. And you can send them an invite and they'll hop in your party. And you guys can play a few games together. I've countless times in Modern Warfare 3 just hopped in the lobby. You know, just talked to guys and vibe the whole time. We, you know, we just run through a team and we just party up. Doesn't mean we win every time, but it means that we're having teamwork. At least I'm duo queuing or even triple queuing or quad stacking. I don't like quad stacking because you get paired against our quads. If there's a random people, I might not have the best communication with them or, you know, they might not understand what I mean when I say small things. So it's not like we're going to have top tier communication, but just duo queuing makes it a lot better. It means you have somebody in the game you can play off of or you can, you know, be communicating. Oh, hey, I'm going to hit new. Maybe since you're there, just fight old real quick. You know, hold this line of sight. They have to be spawning here. You know, basic things you can do to help help you out a lot. And then that somebody else, if your teammates aren't talking or your teammates are throwing the game because they don't know what's going on, it's just one less thing variable to worry about and it really does help if only one person on your team is playing the objective and playing it you know playing a hard point really well that's 25 percent if you have another person there that's 50 percent that doubles your odds just by having one other person in there I know it's not like a broken record here, but just don't throw away games, guys. Play every game out. You never know what can happen, especially in these hills and hard point or even control. It can take one four down and you can easily come back and win on like an invasion control or something. It's a very small thing sometimes that can throw these games and really swing because people spawn out and it's a hiking simulator on some of these maps to get back. To go over SR really briefly, because SR is really what you're here for. So there's two different things in ranked play. You have a level, and then you have a rank. Your rank is like platinum, crimson, or you know diamond. Your level shows how many wins you have. So you get one win, you get like a tick, you get all these ticks basically going around in circle. Once you fill up the tick for that level, you go up to the next level. It's pretty basic stuff. It just shows how many wins you have. And yes, these ticks do kind of show how good you are, because if you are level 20, let's say diamond one, that means you've gotten the diamond one with 20 levels. Level amount of wins it really only works for like the first season but if you are a diamond one and you are level 12 that means that you got there almost in a lot faster at the time because every level that you go up requires more wins so level 12 is you didn't you want it almost every game to get there i don't know if it's exactly how the math works out but it's just the example is you've won a lot more of your games to get to get to the level you're at that's something to keep in mind as well you know so you see somebody who's a, a level a level 10 diamond player the guy's probably pretty good he, you might <laughs> that's a pretty good that that's pretty good i'm just not gonna lie sr on the other hand basically takes a whole bunch of metrics into play it's seeing where you're currently at so if you are levels off of where you're supposed to be if you are in gold and it knows that in modern for two you were an iridescent player or you know or the game is seeing your stats over and over and sees that you are just running through people it's going to give you the max sr which is like a 150 to 200 range it's going to put you in that category so you're going to be getting that amount of sr almost regardless of how you play in those games as long as you don't get shit on basically you're going to be getting a lot of sr until a certain point and then you're going to stop getting a lot of sr it's going to slowly go to like 100 and it's going to work its way down to like 60s and 50s and it might even go down to like 30s eventually basically what this is is it's weighing how much your win was valued at at some point so once you get through the initial stages it will start saying okay did you play better players than you because the game has a hidden system basically saying how good is this person we think this person is a crimson and he's playing people who we think are platinums actually and if you are rated as a crimson in the game and you're playing platinum players and you lose you're gonna lose more sr than if you played crimson players as well the reverse goes if you are a platinum player and you beat crimson players you are going to get more sr than you normally would because you you are lower than where you should be in in the game's mind so that's kind of the way sr works so if you're not getting a lot of sr in your wins either one you're overrated and you consistently are not putting up good numbers and consistently not winning games or you're playing people who are way worse than you consistently because the game probably didn't think you were as good as you are supposed to be so when you win games you don't gain much sr but when you lose games you might be actually losing more sr but that's when you are boosted and you know overrated basically and that's how the game tries to correct you and at the end of every season they will go back and they will reset you and you'll go back down three ranks so if you are a diamond one you will go back to platinum one and if you are crimson and above you will go back to diamond one as well so if you guys have all learned something from this video be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you did and if you want some tips and tricks on how to stop getting slammed in ranked play i would click on this video right here